you might ask yourself, well, why doesn't Michael Harding's paint have solvents in it? Um, and what are those solvents? I always have the belief that I don't understand why other companies put those in, to be absolutely honest. Um, maybe the solvents are there to somehow act as wetting agents to aid the the grinding of the pigment or the wetting in of the pigment initially, but um, I can give an example of what one particular solvent does or something that behaves rather like a solvent, and I'm not trying to blind people now with science. There's a material called methyl ethyl ketoxin. In the industry, it's called MECO for short, and it's it's one of these volatile substances that's used in a number of sort of industrial applications. With the idea with oil paints, it is a, it acts as an oxygen scavenger. And you're probably thinking, well, what is all that about? Now, supposing I made a paint, and it was a very fast-drying colour, like, I don't know, raw umber, burnt umber, viridian, or something like that. And supposing when I made that paint, there were some bubbles within it. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, a nice big bubble the size of your sort of thumb. Theoretically, there's enough oxygen within that bubble that it could be enough to set up drying, so that the inside edge would produce a skin of that bubble. Now, actually, the oxygen scavenger idea is very clever, because what it does is it evaporates into that bubble and combines with the oxygen before the linseed oil can, and it neutralizes it, which actually is very, very ingenious. However, from my point of view, it then means that there's another material in there, which I don't like the sound of, because one, it smells like crazy, will give people headaches, and also it means that as soon as you put an ingredient like that in, it's displacing something else that should be in there. Um, and even if it's like a half a percent, that means therefore there has to be half a, a half a percent less pigment or half a percent linseed oil. And those are very important things because, of course, the pigment's responsible for the light fastness. The oil is effectively a glue, gluing the pigment particle. So as soon as you start playing around putting those things or other things like it in place, it is displacing all those other things. All right, now that, of course, begs the question, well, how can I get away with it? Well, those other manufacturers can't. Um, I think the, the problem with getting a bubble into the paint usually occurs at the tube fitting stage. And, of course, sometimes we, when we do a small paint uh, paint making run, maybe just a couple of dozen tubes, some of those are even filled by hand, and there's tricks to make sure that you tap it down, rather like you do with a, a ketchup bottle to make sure the contents go near the cap. We'll do that, and so the bubbles come out by the force of gravity. The same thing sort of applies with the, with a mechanized tube filler because you're injecting through a very small, narrow orifice, sometimes smaller than the end of a pencil, and you can inject the paint in at, at maybe a tenth of a second, which therefore means the paint is being shot to the end of the inside of the tube at such speed that the bubbles are totally left behind. And sometimes when my guys are using our tube filler, like, you'll hear a little pop as a bubble has been burst out. But the great thing is now that that is liberated into the air. Our only headache, of course, at that stage is if the tube filler thinks that uh, a, a 10 mil bubble was actually paint, then the measure is low. So as a result, we check the, the, the weights of every tube to make sure it's consistently full. And any tube, usually when, if they hear a pop like that, they'll immediately check that tube. And if it's not right, it's put aside and, and topped up accordingly later. So, yeah, the, the, I mean, you could call these uh, manufacturers tricks of the trade. Um, the baffling thing is for me that, um, yeah, we, 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 we do get the... I will have the odd person call up and say, oh, I've got um, skin in my paint tube. And apologies at that. With all the thousands of tubes we make and all the artists we supply, yeah, it's a fact of life. We do get the odd tube returned to us like that and without question we always replace so rest assured it's even if we do leave out the methyl ethyl k toxin the meco you're not going to have a problem with the paint anyway and even if there is a bit of dry skin please forgive us but we're just trying to make the paint to such a level of perfection we don't need that junk <laughs>